This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, welcome back to Think Tech and Community Matters. I'm Jay Fidel, and I am honored to have with us today a former trustee of OHA and also KSBE, Oz Stender. Thank you so much for joining us, Oz. Love to be here. Yeah. <laughs> So we are casting about for something really important to talk about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you pointed out that just a couple of days ago, some very interesting play in the newspaper, in the Star Advertiser, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about HTA and about tourism and about, you know, conceivably, um, you know, do we have too many tourists and what, if anything, can we do about it? Can you, can you articulate the issue? Yeah, it's, uh, it appeared, there's an article that appeared in the Sunday paper and there's a full page on it, uh, too many tourists question mark and uh, then on the second page there's a little uh, editorial piece written by Lynn Lee uh, she now lives in in uh, in Oregon because she she left town she left town because she says this imbalance is making it difficult for the locals and she's right you know and she says in there that the tourism business has replaced the plantation business so all the people who are suffering under the, I guess, uh, plantation regime are now suffering under the tourism regime because they're the people that, you know, can't pay the rent. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, pretty serious, actually. A lot of, a lot of homelessness, yeah. a lot of people falling that's off right. the, and, and a lot of more native Hawaiians. I agree. And that's, that has always bothered me uh, because I remember back in the 70s when we were talking about the state plan, uh, at the time, somebody said, you know, the max should be six million tourists. This was in the 70s. And this was to be, if we get to, and they estimated that we would reach that by the, uh, you know, before 2000, before the turn of the century. And would you believe we're way past that, way past yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, they talk about 9,000. I nine, read nine everything. Million. Nine million, yeah. right. And every time I read the paper, you know, you look at HTA, they want to promote and get more and more and more. Everybody wants more and more and more and more. I think there's got to be a point that you have to stop because the people that are suffering because of tourism and all the people that come here, they can't afford, they can't afford groceries. So uh, what you've articulated, I think, is an interesting connection, the connection between <clears throat> tourism as a way to make things more expensive for right. local people. How does that work? Well, you know, look at the, um, uh, most of the people in the tourist business are low-level positions. Sure, they have a lot of good local people who have achieved managerships in, in the many of the hotels and the airlines. Service jobs in the hotels. That's right. But which it, don't pay a lot of money. That's right. It's the person that makes the bed, that uh, cuts the vegetables, and they're the ones that are suffering. They're the ones that are suffering. So, you know, but if, if, uh, if HDA were here, it would say, but wait, us, we bring plenty of money into the state, you know, and if you limit us, you're limiting the amount of money that comes into the state. What's your answer? Where does the money go? Where is the <laughs> money going? You know, it's not going to the people who need it. You know, the people who are suffering, it's not going to them, you know. So but they may lose their jobs. And that, you know, no, I mean, what, what I happens doubt it. then? I yeah. doubt it. You know, look at Bermuda. They limit the number of tourists that can, can come yeah, there. And what happens? The prices go up. So the only people that can come here are the rich folks. And that's okay. Let them pay. <laughs> and, you know, if you talk about raising the tourist tax by 1% and everybody's fainting, the hotel industry is fainting all over the place because of that. Yeah. You know, I went to Bermuda and I couldn't believe what they charge people for coming there. And they still come, you know. Yeah, I mean, the, so, uh, the argument has been made, of course, yeah. that uh, if you have a foreign investment in tourist infrastructure, hotels, um, and you are, you know, have to pay wages, of course, but this, the rest is profit. I mean, aside from expenses, right. you know, you have a profit, right. and the profit goes to the investors, and if the investors are offshore, the profit doesn't stay here. Right. So arguably, what, you know, what happens is, uh, um, you know, we don't have the benefit That's locally right. Exactly. Of, of, of the profit, yeah. <clears throat> but I, you know, I, I would, I would visit again. Yeah, what no. happens if you don't have the hotels? What happens if you limit the hotels? N you know, no jobs for yeah. a certain amount of people. Where will they earn? How will we make it good for them? 
Well, right now they're basically importing people to work in the hotel industry. What, Either from offshore, a lot from of, the mainland? A lot of immigrants are coming here yeah. because they can get these jobs. Yeah. We don't need all of them. You know, we might need a few of them. And it's, they're the ones that are making it difficult for the people that live here. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, all I'm saying is that they need to talk about it. They cannot just sweep it under the rug, as they've been doing all these years. Tourism is good for everybody. But it's not. It's but let's not talk about it. Let's talk about, talk about it. So uh, you know, let's let's have that conversation. Right. So <clears throat> for years, you know, people have said, a lot of people have said, including people that we both know, that said, surely there must be a limit on this. We right. can't just go spinning it up and up and up and up because right. after a while, it's it's more than economic. Right. It's the it's the fragile nature of an island society that That's is right. at risk, and it's not only the Native Hawaiians. That's it's right. everyone. It's everyone. Mm -hmm. So. What's the limit? That's right. I don't know what the limit is. But they need to talk about it. And in the meanwhile, they should slow down. Don't keep promoting it because you, they're destroying the very reason people come here. They come here because it's green, it's open space, the oceans are beautiful and not crowded. But look at Waikiki. I go to Waikiki, I can't believe. You can hardly walk down the beach. With, you know, I grew up on that beach, yeah, yeah. and now you can't even walk down the beach with so many bodies on the yeah. sand. Well, I remember Waikiki, go to the movies, go to a restaurant, it was all doable, parking was doable. Yeah. I remember when, uh, you know, the, the lot in front of, the, <laughs> this will take you back, the lot in front of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel was a dirt lot. Right. And you could just drive right in there and park your car, no problemo, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that now. Yeah. You just try yeah. parking. That's As right. a result, nobody goes back for the movies. There is no movie. That's right. And the restaurants are real expensive and the traffic is hard yeah. to get into. We'd, so we'd, local people, they don't do yeah, it. Yeah, we go surfing and uh, instead of taking our taking our board home, we just buried it in the sand. Came back <laughs> really? the next day, dug it up, and it was there the next the water day. <laughs> Now you can't even get in the water yeah. because there's so many yeah. people in the water. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's an issue that, I mean, look at Anama Bay, way overtaxed, you know, way overtaxed. They're going to ruin that bay just because they, they don't limit the number of people that go there. Well, there's, another, there's a flip side um, issue about mm -hmm. dependence, <clears throat> you know, which a lot of people think about also, mm -hmm. is that if you have tourism, as the biggest single industry in the state, and I, I don't mm -hmm. know if it is or getting to be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, before, remember, it was agriculture, military, and tourism, and those three. Right. Now, I think it's not so much agriculture, yeah. not, so much uh, not so much military, yeah. but lots and lots of tourism. Yeah. So, you know, what happens when we get completely interdependent on that, and then we have a 9-11? Right. But then we have who knows what, something right. in the world, because the world right. is so volatile these days. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, and all of a sudden the beaches are empty. You know. it that would, that inter interdependence. It will never happen. Is, it yeah. will never happen. People will come to Hawaii <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> because it's a safe place, it's a clean place, it's a wonderful place to be. Yeah. And that's why we have them coming in droves. We need to slow that down. From your lips. But you know, the problem, the problem is that, <clears throat> assuming that, mm -hmm. assuming that they will always come, they will always be the path to our right. door, at some point you have an effect, and I don't know when that is, we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. At some point you have so many coming and drawing down, if you will, on the, on the infrastructure of the state, not just the city, but the state, that it no longer is... Um, it no longer has the quality of life that That's we would right. like to have. Right. Maybe we've passed that point now. Or yeah, it seems like we're from what you near say, we on are, that edge. We are right on now. On the edge. Yeah. 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 Right so now. we're nine nine million. Yeah. Um, where where do you think we should go? I mean, ten? Would you take ten? This is like a negotiation here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know what the number is, yeah. but they need to they need to talk about it. They need to start slowing it down. Don't keep marketing Hawaii. They don't need, all this tourist dollars they spend on advertising, they don't need to do that. Yeah. The word is out there that if you want a wonderful vacation, come to Hawaii. And they will come. You don't need to tell anybody about it. Yeah. I so you would the save days, money on the advertising. You save the money on the advertising, yeah. 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 The now, budget what, what? should go to helping the homeless and helping those that are, uh, you know, trying to put their kids through school and, you know, kids that don't have to depend on government breakfasts, you know. 
So yeah, how do you how do you fix that though? Because we have the homeless right out there, right. and sometimes it's only really a few feet away mm -hmm. from the tourist industry or those mm -hmm. new condos there on right. Alamoana, right. just a few feet away. The condos look down mm -hmm. on the blue tents. You know, mm -hmm. how do we fix that? How do we equalize that? Are you suggesting that we should uh, take some kind of regulatory or tax steps that would have some effect at equalizing this this disparity? Yes. What? They need to take the, all that tourist dollars that they are using for advertising or promoting Hawaii, use that to solve the tourism business, uh, problem. You mean because the for every dollar, the homeless problem. For every dollar they spend on the homeless, they're taking it away from the people that uh, are local, yeah. that truly need it. You know? They need to do something. So that's really two things. I don't know which one is more important. At least uh, I could ask you which one is more important. One is somewhere a conversation about a limit, and mm -hmm. the other is somewhere a conversation about about equalizing the disparity. Right. Out of out of taxes or some right. kind of uh, impositions on tourism. Right. Yeah. Which right. one is more important? I think taxes on tourism, because that's a gravy train, and that's the that's where the money is. And they should take advantage of it. Yeah. You know? and, and with money, you can fix things. That's like right. This. Yeah. With that, you can yeah. fix yeah. things. Yeah. So I, I guess where you know what I'd like to go with you is um, who has the conversation? Um, is it is it uh, is it the legislature? Is it the governor? Is it some other organization? Where, where does this conversation take yeah. place? I think it has to take place with the people in the tourist industry, because they are the ones that. They need to create the solution to the problem. There is a problem, and you cannot deny there is a problem. And they're the ones that need to address it. Yeah. Yeah. So they're on one side of the table. That's right. Or at least on a side of the right. table. Right. <laughs> I love yeah. this. So Oz, who else is at the table? At the table, the young folks uh, that are, you know, the, the kids who are here in Hawaii that are having a difficult time trying to make ends meet. Talking about millennials. Right, the millennials. Doesn't they're have the ones to be Native need, Hawaiians, but millennials right, in general. That's yeah. right. They're the ones that need to talk about it because they're the ones that are going to uh, suffer the consequences of whatever happens, whatever happens. Yeah, they inherit whatever we do. Right, right. They're the ones who should be talking yeah. about it. So, and, um, you know, I mean, they're not organized now. Sorry. Well, uh, neither the Native true. Hawaiians nor the Millennials, I mean, right. except perhaps right. through OHA, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're mostly not organized, and right. the Millennials are not organized. Right. And how do you get them together to have an intelligent conversation, to be advocates, if you will? Yeah. Well, what do I know? <laughs> I, I'm it's not just gonna, us. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just in the business. But I think the governor of the state and the leadership of the state needs to address it. They need to create the venue that will open the door to this discussion. Yeah. They're the ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's so many other issues linked up with it, you know. I mean, for yeah. example, you know from your time at the uh, Kamehameha Schools that the cost of occupancy has increased. Yeah. This is a feature that, that also affects homelessness, mm -hmm. and it affects the cost of living because everything depends on what you pay for a foot of land, either That's buying right. it or renting That's it. That's right. Uh, don't you think we need, at the same time, or in the same discussion, same conversation, same table, a discussion of the cost of occupancy? Oh, yes. Absolutely. The, you know, I look at my grandchildren. When I was their age, I, you know, there were opportunities for me, and we didn't have the kinds of tourism, tourism that we have today, but there were opportunities for me to, uh, to go to any beach I wanted to go to, uh, I could go hunting, I could go fishing, and I can go surfing. You're making me nostalgic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but today you can't do those things because there's too many other people out there. So they have to have rules. So with the rules, some people get aced out of the opportunity. And so why? Why are we doing this? You know? Oh, oh. <laughs> Well, you can't go back, you know. You I mean, I think a lot of people would like to go back. Yeah, you can't go back. Well, that takes me to, you know, the Hawaiian issue. I mean, that we um, we look we get frustrated. I, I, I at my time at OHA, I always frustrated by the the people who are very unhappy and they march and they 
uh, Mauna Kea being an example, uh, they're doing this out of frustration because at one time, Hawaii, as many of them like to remember it, uh, it was, uh, everything was available to them. They could do, they can go hunting, they can go in the forest, they can go to the beach. Um, I remember there was a lawsuit going on when I was at Oha where there's this fisherman, a Hawaiian person in Kona, that went fishing uh, by a certain route to the beach. And they started to build a hotel resort area out of it, the, the uh, Manalani. And uh, as he did every day, walk through that area to get to the beach. And it was told he couldn't do that anymore. Cool. He couldn't understand that, you know? Well, it's hard to understand. That's what basic cultural point. That's right. But, you know, people don't respect that. And so it ended up that OHA had to sue the, the, the landowner in order to allow him to, to do what he'd done for years and years. What happened? Uh, that came the, uh, uh, the law that the uh, Supreme Court dealt with, uh, and now Hawaiians there is have, a right of access. They have right of access to the beach. Good but result. it's happening everywhere else. For the people that don't know they have this right, you know, they find some other way to do it or they don't go. And, yeah. uh, and they're frustrated. So over little it. by little, you have this frustration. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> let's take a short break. I think I have to recover. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back after one minute with Oz Stender. Okay. Aloha. I'm Tim Apachaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apicella. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. You're here with Oz Stander, a former trustee of KSBE and also OHA. Um, talking about, I guess we're talking about trying to find a way to achieve the same sort of quality of life that we had. Right. We, the living, yes. I'm not talking about 100 years ago, we, yes. we the living can remember and enjoy. Mm. Uh, you, you spoke, we had a program uh, last year, you remember on Sovereignty, and uh, you left such an impression on me. You spoke about the one light bulb you had in your house. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very, very modest house. Whole family lived in one room. You were really poor. That's right. um, and yet, and yet, the, you know, your description of life in those times, it was sweet. Yeah, it was a wonderful time, you know, and, uh, and how we put tags on things. And, um, and my sister always said, you know, uh, we were poor. But we didn't know we were poor until somebody told us we were poor. Yeah. But we enjoyed a life that we didn't have money and you know those the luxury things of life, but we enjoyed the beach, we enjoyed the mountains, we enjoyed the rivers, and and that was wonderful. Yeah. But uh, can't do that anymore. Yeah, and there's That's so many things. Away. There's so many things that are barriers yeah. to do the kinds of things. I mean, you want to walk in the woods? Well, it's hard because they're. There are landowners that won't permit you to cross That's into right. the, the trail. Yeah. Um, you want to go to the beach where they have access issues yeah. and so forth. And you're bringing a group of people, and mostly our, our tourists, they don't respect the land. They really don't. I remember when, when I was growing up, Sacred Falls was a place that we, uh, it was our swimming hole. 
And, but there's a ritual that you have to follow in order to do that. And part of it was um, you have to do a, what, a little offering. Uh-huh. And then on the way back, you have to put the offering back with the rock where you found Native it. Native Hawaiian custom. It was a custom. And years go by, I take my grandchildren uh, to see this place. And I'm shocked because there are bottles, trash, and, and the place is a oh, mess. Gee, that's it's a mess. Yeah. I was sick into my stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Then shortly after that experience, we had the landslide. And after it was, and you know, unfortunately, some people were killed. But I said to myself, "That's Amakua's way of saying enough is enough." Yeah. So don't, I wrote don't a letter. Fool with Mother Earth. That's yeah. right. I wrote a letter to the LNR and said, you know, they should close that trail and every trail that leads, like Manawili Falls, we have that problem today, because people don't respect the land. They don't, and they ruin it. And that's what's going to happen. If you keep having these people uncontrolled, walking everywhere, they'll ruin the land. Yeah. Well, I'm reminded of a hike I took in the Milford Track in New Zealand, mm-hmm. okay? And it was a, a beautiful trail. It was staffed. The parts that were wet and difficult mm-hmm. to pass were, they had wooden platforms you could mm-hmm. pass. Uh, they even had um, homes and way stations in the trail. Um, and it was just a glorious hike. And everybody was on the hike. It was a, a, a completely democratized. And I thought of Aea Loop Trail, which was my mm, favorite when mm-hmm. I was younger. And I thought, gee, if you put some money into that, yeah. if you maintained it, if mm. you did some rock work along the way mm-hmm. and you know, cut it back sometimes, mm-hmm. you, would have a, you would have a lovely trail. But yeah. we don't do that. And it's a question of values. That's right. It's a question of government and agencies and, and the people mm-hmm. you know, not really getting together on right. and, and asking mm-hmm. for those things to be preserved. That's right. What do you think about the Stayway to Heaven? Uh, actually, they should reopen it. They it should a, be. Oh, yeah. I think there's an, it's an opportunity. You know, the problem with the tourist industry today is that you have people coming here and they need to do things. They want to do things. And that's a venue. That, but manage it. You know, don't just close it down because you're not going to stop them from doing it. We have the same. I live in Manawili. And we have the same problem with Manawili Falls, with Mount Olamana, where people will just go up there and hike and endanger themselves and everybody else uh, not res- because they don't respect the nature and the land. Yeah. And, but if you teach them and you manage them, and you can't just let them do whatever they want to do. Well, this yeah. takes us to a very important uh, subject that actually connects everything we've been talking about today. And that is managing foreign investment in yeah. Hawaii. Oh, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, there's two, there's two extremes. One is a cargo cult, where you love everything that comes from somewhere else. And mm-hmm. the other is paranoia, where you hate everything that comes from somewhere <laughs> else. And, and sometimes, you know, we make the wrong choice. We love things that we should not love, and we hate things we should not hate. <laughs> right. We don't make good decisions about that. But, you know, we had a program about this, actually. Think Tank had a program about this a couple of years ago. You might have been involved, I'm not sure you were, mm. uh, where we, we brought in people to talk about um, how you bring foreign investment, you know, mm. offshore investment, mainland right. Asia, wherever mm. it is, uh, into Hawaii, and then how you manage it. And if you just bring it in or allow it to come in and you don't manage it, you get what, you know, you get things you don't like, maybe. Yeah, you and don't so that know. includes tourism. That's exactly it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So how would you manage tourism better? Look at, you know, most um, uh, countries, uh, in Europe especially, uh, when you travel uh, and you take a bus ride or whatever, any guide that's assigned to you has to be certified by the state. You know, they have to tell the truth about what you're looking at. And they need to teach you how to appreciate what you're seeing, and we don't have that here, you know. And that's one thing. If, if the tourist bureau wants to do something good, that's what they should be doing. Yeah, right. Requiring all of the bus drivers, tour guides, right, to take a course and learn true history of Hawaii, and I think, and have them teach the people how to respect Hawaii. Yeah. And uh, and what they're seeing. And that, and that would go a long way. That would go a long way, but because you know, everybody's so interested in just 
getting the dollars, you're not doing anything to yeah. protect so the. Uh, who does that? HCA or maybe, HDA maybe should OHA be doing should it. get involved? Maybe well, KSBE should yeah, get involved. Yeah, we tried. We tried to get HTA to do it when when I was at OHA, and uh, you know you get a meeting and that's it. Everybody leaves the room and nobody wants to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. But that, you know, I agree with you. That could be a salient feature for um, respecting the land, respecting right. the people, and making the people feel respected. Right, you right, know, exactly. Like, this, is, this is, you know, um, a good collaboration right. between tourists who don't know anything mm -hmm. and uh, the, the people who would like them to know something yeah. in order to respect what we have. Yeah, you know? and, and I think the tourists would, re would really appreciate that. I really believe that the tourists want to be, you know, supportive of, you know, trying to keep Hawaii, Hawaii. Yeah. And uh, so if you were sitting now, mm -hmm. I'll differentiate the question, but if you were sitting on OHA, what would you tell them to do about this? Go back to HCA and take on the mantle of, of trying to get it fixed. Okay. You know, need to have it fixed. Okay. They need to bring it to the table. Uh, and discuss it and try to find some resolution to it. What would you, what would you, if you could talk to the homeless, it's hard to talk to them because they're so fragmented, oh, yeah. but mm -hmm. if you could talk to the homeless, what would you say to them? <laughs> I, I don't want to say it, but uh, <laughs> go get some help. You know, many of them do need it. And I think uh, uh, we need to sometimes, you know, be a little more aggressive in requiring these people to to manage their lives uh, and we cannot just let them move from place to place um, it's not working yeah we have it's to give them working. whatever it takes for them to become part of the community that's right again. Yeah. and they have to appreciate that yeah, yeah. so uh, you brought in today and i looked at it before the show began a letter yeah that you wrote uh, to the editor Yes. And it was about these things that we saw in the paper on All Sunday. Right. So may I ask you, Oz, to read the letter? For oh, the record, for the okay. Record. This is the way you okay. get the chance to express. That's <laughs> right. Okay. And I, I wrote this Sunday morning when I read the paper. And I said, this is the kind of thing I think about all the time. And it bothers me that nobody's doing anything about it. When I read the article by the editorial piece by Miss Lee, I was really impressed with what she said. Yeah. So this is what I said. I, I, I sent a letter off to the uh, letter to the editor. Uh, they probably got it in their trash can. But, and this is what I said. Having just read Insight, Too Many Tourists, that's an article that appeared on the editorial page of the newspaper, Lynn Lee's editorial piece, both appearing in today's paper, both pieces deals with an issue that has been bothering me for some time. Ms. Lee's piece is timely, thoughtful, and profound. I sincerely believe that Hawaii is overrun by tourists and our local people are suffering by its impact. I am frightened by the HTA statement that, quote, looking toward the future, HTA intends to continue its efforts to balance its marketing of tourism with the support of events, programs, and et cetera, which, when you see, which says to me, let's make it better to bring more tourists. In my view, we need to rethink the, quote, benefits of tourism. Back in the 70s, when the state plan was being discussed, it was said that six million tourists would be the ceiling. We have gone by way beyond the hat and the burden is being carried on the backs of our local people. As Ms. Lee points out, and I quote, the oligarchy of the old plantation society was replaced with a new version populated by the tourist industry. We need and we must deal with this issue now before it causes greater damage to our local people. Aloha. That was my, my message. Thank you, Austin. We really need to do something. Yeah. Thank you so much for this discussion, for those thoughts. Yeah. Really appreciate it. I know a lot of people will be happy about it. Aloha. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>